Hey all viewers, today for the initial checkout we have a set of Uniden telephones. This is the model D1680-2C. Digitan Deck 6. And this was in fact the red and blue Digitan Duo of Digitan cordless phones with Digitan answering system. These were some of the last phones that Uniden sold here in the US. These would have sold alongside the 1780 series. And I just was never too fond of this particular model in comparison to other phones that Uniden made. It just didn't quite seem to have the same degree of quality. I know of a number of scenarios, even amongst people that I know, who have had this model, not particularly the 18C, but the 16 series, and it just quits after a couple of years, which historically is extremely unlike Uniden. Many of their older products run for decades on end with no troubles. So I don't think the quality was quite built into these like it used to be, and that would make sense as this kind of seemed like their last ditch effort to remain in the US market. I still to this day don't understand why they discontinued the 15 series because those phones flew off the shelf until the day they were discontinued and nothing really made them obsolete. A lot of the budget phones that we still have today from VTech and AT&T are a very similar fashion so I don't understand why they stopped that series but whatever we may never know the answer to that now it's got kind of a weird box here ah jeez what the heck they shipped it like that good grief Uh, I guess that wasn't too bad. Looks like everything's fared okay. There's one one of these wire ties in there. These kind of stink. They're very hard to use. Okay, so we have the base unit, which is in pretty decent condition. It's a little bit dusty, but nothing too major. These use the 8 volts power supplies, which was another thing I didn't like about these phones. They deviated from the standard 6 and 9 volts that were used for decades in favor of these very small 8 volt supplies. They're 8 volts at 300 milliamps. Would have much preferred they kept it at the 8, I mean the, the 6 or the 9, because those are pretty easy to come across if you should need a replacement. But they had to change it for some reason to this weird thing. I believe these adapters are the same. They're both 8 volts, 300 milliamps. Yes, they are. And just for informational purposes, this is the AC adapter model PS-0035, which is a model that they used on quite a few different phones. Okay, let's plug this in. Power up the base here. Looks like that booted up properly. Now let's plug in the cradle. There's really no way to tell if that's booted up properly or not. 
handsets had batteries plugged in, so these batteries are probably not any good anymore. These are the nickel metal hydride batteries. And the model number is the BT1021 nickel metal hydride rechargeable battery. These are from 2011 D and they're made by the core run. So these batteries are now a decade old and these are the 300 milliamps. I noticed sometime in the early 2010s a lot of telephones switched over to these 300 milliamp cells and I think that's kind of brilliant because when it comes to rechargeable batteries when they have a, sh a smaller capacity they're generally able to take more charging cycles and the reality is most people don't talk on a phone more than a couple hours per day and so they're never going to go through the entirety of the charge of the 650 milliamp battery that was historically used so I think this, the change to these 300 milliamp batteries was, was pretty adequate and uh, not a bad idea at all. In fact, I bought some replacement batteries recently for my DCX200 sets. And I bought these, which were the 300 milliamps. And while I noticed that the talk time, is, it's less. It, standby time is like maybe four or five days with these batteries. I think they're only rated for seven days with the 650s. I didn't notice all that much of a difference. Certainly never went anywhere near running out of charge with these batteries. So I think they're fine. And they've lasted they've lasted a while too. I, I had these batteries in there somewhat of uh, waterproof phones now for over a year and there's been no degrading in the um, in the charge life. So I, I kinda like these the three hundred milliamp format. I don't know who these are made by. Oh here we go. Manufactured by Geo Energy. I don't know what kind of brand that is. I've noticed ever since about it maybe two years ago now, certain cordless phone batteries that were readily available have come to an abrupt stop. And I can only imagine that it's part of the material shortage rather than a lack of demand because I don't think the demand would just magically disappear like that. Okay, so both of the telephones have booted up fine. Let's adjust the camera and they are requesting a check for the telephone line and that is because the telephone line is the unplugged okay and now they're still requesting a check for the telephone line because the equipment is not powered on. Now the equipment is powered on and we no longer have a check for the telephone line. Is there a bit of a glare on here? Let's put this up a little bit. Okay, that's good. Okay, so we need to set the time. I have mixed feelings about the software on these phones. There are certain things that I like about it and certain things I don't like about it. The menus is one of the things I don't like. On the 1580 you get three lines of the menu and this only gives two. And that to me, it's just, it feels harder to cycle through it and find what you want. Okay, the date and time is set. Now the standby screen on these phones is one of the things that I liked about them because you have a lot of information on the screen but it's still pretty clearly laid out. You have the signal, the battery charge, the handset name, the new calls, and the date and time plus some answering machine information. This one has like some junk on the screen. Let me get that off so that we can see more clearly. It has an indicator whether the message machine is on or off. 
and the number of messages on the machine. So you really can gather pretty much everything you'd want to know just from a quick glance at the standby screen. My only commentary would be on the date that they should have moved the character over when it's only a single day. It should have been moved over one to the left or the zero should have been left in place so that it doesn't look like there's an unnecessary space there. Other than that, I think the standby screen is pretty good. There's also a reception meter. It doesn't give you a whole lot of information. I believe the triangle on top indicates that you're very near to the base and it's in low power mode. And then when the triangle goes away, it indicates that you're in standard or some kind of higher power mode. Okay. So it looks like we have a message on here. Ringer off. The ring was off. Let's turn it on. One new message and four old messages. Yeah, hi, this is Larry Lambert. Just wanted to talk to the Rossman family and see how you guys are going about the turkey of the world. Uh, well, well, I'm going to turn something. And uh, just want to let you guys know what I'm doing now. I'm going to try to catch you. These are all blank. Friday, 10, 20 a.m. That sounded like the hang up of an old, like a 900 megahertz or some kind of analog phone. Saturday, 10, 15 a.m. Are these all at the same time? Friday, 10, 20, no, a.m. Friday, 10, 20, 7, a.m. Saturday, 10, 15, a.m. Yeah, hi, this is Larry Lambert. Just wanted to... Alright, let's... To delete all messages, press delete again. Okay. The answer machine sounds like it's very poor quality. I don't know if that guy was just mumbling or if the recording volume is just very, very poor. The date and time announcement was very unclear and kind of scratchy and blurry. So, jeez. Oh so I don't think that this answer machine is really that good of a quality. Let's see what the greeting is. Answering system is on. Hello, no one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Yeah, it just sounds very distorted to me. Okay, let's see if the fine handset is working. That is working. The phones themselves are in pretty good condition. couple of scratches on the back, but nothing major. This one's got some wear on the battery cover. The button layout is, is decent on these. Um, I find it pretty logical. They're easy to press text is very clear, especially the numbers. You know, it's, it's pretty good. It, they have kind of a cheap feel. It's not quite as bad as I remember it being, but they feel a little bit cheap in comparison to some of the uh, other models like the 1580 and the 2080. It could have something to do with the weight. These are very lightweight phones and that kind of gives them a cheaper feel. 
Anyways, let's see what the ringer is. Oh, the ringer was changed. Alright, well, let's go ahead and call these things up. And uh, I guess uh, we can record a message. Screening Freak Show. Okay, we're going to have to go in there and turn that call screening off so that we don't have another freak show. So here's the other thing I don't like about the menu. It only has one uh, item showing at a time which is okay I mean you really kind of get the same information but I just like the other layout on the other phone better where it gives you three different lines what I do like is that this information down at the bottom the date and time and everything that stays on the screen at all times which I think is great on a lot of phones the date and time disappears when you're on a call and sometimes you need to keep track of the time when you're on a call okay let's take a look here uh, at the answer machine yeah so when you first go in here it's only two two different things showing and then when you get in into another one it's only one line at a time okay the security code is the default which is always 80 we'll change it to two rings uh, the recording time that can be four minutes message alert is off and the call screen is off okay let's record a greeting record greeting you've reached the digitan donut store all the donuts are stale call back tomorrow you've reached the digitan donut store all the donuts are stale. Call back tomorrow. Doesn't sound too bad. You've reached the Digitan Donut. All right, let's call again and uh, see what the greeting sounds like through the phone. The sound of that greeting wasn't too bad. It wasn't great, but I think it was pretty typical for a Digitan answering machine of this era. Okay, so that's our second message recorded. And it's still recording. Okay, now it's done recording. I'm going to clear out this uh, caller ID log. Let's see how many calls this thing got. Got a couple of calls every day. Almost every day. It's kind of surprising, it doesn't look like it was used all that much. Maybe they never answered their phones. No entries in the phone book. Couple entries in the redial there. A lot of them are seven digit numbers. I'm going to delete all the calls. Okay. Let's go ahead and play back these messages now. Yeah, 
messages. What a cruel, straining freak show. Saturday, 4.26 p.m. The sound of that grating wasn't too bad. It wasn't great, but I think it was pretty typical for a digital answering machine of this era. Saturday, 4.29 p.m. End of messages. The volume does seem a bit low on the messages. Well, I'm not particularly surprised if there is something somewhat wrong with this answering machine. Let's try playback on the handset and see if it's any different. Saturday, 4.31 p.m. Two old messages. What a call straining freak show. Saturday, 4.26 p.m. The sound of that grating wasn't too bad. It wasn't great, but I think it was pretty typical for a digital answering machine of this era. Saturday, 4.29 p.m. End of messages. That speakerphone is very harsh. Even just the pre-recorded voice saying the time. Very harsh. All right, let's see if we can do a remote access on this thing and see if it sounds any better. Because I have noticed that some of the answer machines seem to sound better playing back through a remote machine. You've reached the digit Saturday, 4.32 p.m. Two old messages. To play incoming message, press 0, 2. Or help, press 1, 0. To repeat message, press 0, 1. To play incoming message, press 0, 2. To skip message, press 0, 3. To delete message, press 0, 4. To stop, press Zero five to turn answer function on. Press zero six to turn answer function off. Press zero nine or help. Press one zero. Two old messages. What a call straining freak show. <laughs> Saturday, 4.26 p.m. The sound of that grating wasn't too bad. It wasn't great, but I think it was pretty typical for a digital answering machine of this era. Saturday, 4.29 p.m. End of messages. I think the quality was still pretty poor, but I do think it was also significantly better. Which is odd, I don't know why that is. Alright, well, let's go to the mains and let's make some outside calls. Alright, we'll just make one, that should be good enough. That sounds pretty clear to me. Um, so this week is a great time to visit the farm pumpkin fields. They are located at... But that's up all the way. That's not particularly loud. And these don't have a very good volume range. Alright, let's check the other one.
the volume is about the same on this one. Farm's natural habitat. Our walks and displays feature fun ways for families to learn about our local wildlife. And with the corn farm, we provide our delicious and nutritious squash tent. These don't have the audio tone adjustment like the 1580s and the 2080s did. Above can be done in advance via our website, and we strongly encourage doing so in advance, particularly on weekends instead of <laughs> on site. Our <laughs> sea wagon ride is also available to experience with a route that takes you among the many crops we grow and the lovely scenery of our farms of setting. Now, our website contains details regarding our reservation process for pumpkin season. If you are just seeking squash for dinner to pick up for some holiday decor, such as gourds and such, we have our grab-and-go tent, which does not require a reservation. I don't Again, particularly like the sound of that speaker phone. I don't think it's super clear. It is open Thursday through Sunday um, uh, from uh, 12 until 6. It is located at this our home. This one sounds a little farm, cleaner to me. Six on the Tree Hill Road in Shelton. Remember, that is a separate location from the pumpkins. Um, and you can pre-order bottle sales uh, to pick up at the winery, uh, jonesfamilyfarms.com. Uh, you can enjoy wine by the glass, and on-site reservations are welcome and high. It's not terrible, but it leaves something to be desired. Okay, now I will record some testing messages into the testing answering machine. Looks like I finished that message up just in time because now it's the fall. One new message and 12 old messages. The memory is full. Please erase your messages. Message one. This is the testing message for the number one from the red handset, which is going to be considered handset number two. I'm going to exit the studio now. It's still in the echo mode. I have exited the studio. I'm going to traverse across, and it's already turned the echo mode off. Because there's so many phones over here, I think there's a fair bit of hashing on the air, so it probably does not stay on echo for as long as it would here in other areas. I am all the way across the room now, so if the reception is still clear, then it's working well. Okay, now I'll go back into the studio, and this is with the telephone on talk. I'm going to go ahead and switch to the speakerphone now. Okay, I have switched to the speakerphone now, and just for comparative purposes, I am speaking at about the same volume and distance as I was before. Now I will go ahead and put the phone down on the table. And I'll start walking away from the telephone. These telephones are pretty narrow, and so they're not standing up very well on the carpet here. There we go. I got it to stand up. So right now I'm speaking right over the phone at about a foot away. I'm going to start backing up now. I'm going to turn it off to the cell fan so we don't get any wind noise in the video. Okay, now I'm about two feet away, three feet away, four feet away. This is about as far away as I would expect the telephone to work on a speakerphone. If it works clearly here, then I would consider that acceptable. If it doesn't work much beyond this, I think that's okay because I think you're getting to the point that exceeds a typical real world use case. Okay, so I'm going to start going back again. This is about 5 feet, 6 feet, 7 feet, 8 feet, 9 feet, 10 feet. Okay, so now I will uh, switch the uh, handset to number one. Okay, we're on to the handset number one. This is on talk, and now this is on speakerphone. Okay, so. I'm going to hang this one up into the uh, into the base unit so we can hear what that sounds like. Okay, and now this time we're going to hang up into the cradle so we can hear what that sounds like. And now I will hang up using the buttons or the singular button. End of messages. I was not particularly happy with the way that picked up my voice. 
The talk mode seemed kind of muffled to me. It wasn't very clean and crisp sounding. And while the speakerphone did pick everything up, the volume was quite low, even at the distance that I thought it should still be working well. So I can't say I'm very happy with the performance of these phones. The earpiece sounds okay, but the speakerphone, you know, it's okay, but it's not as good as some of the other models that Unidon has made. And the outgoing audio is certainly not as good as some of the other models Unidon has made. So I do think that for whatever reason that there may have been, this was definitely not Unidon's best work. The answering machine I don't think is pretty good either. The recording volume is very low and the playback is very garbled and crummy. So it's too bad, but uh, these were not the greatest phones. And I tend to think that this is not the case. I mean, we're only speculating now, but it's possible that people, people's experience with these models were what deterred people from buying unit and telephones and ultimately led to the departure of Uniden from the phone market here in the US. I'm not really sure why they left. They seem to get plenty of sales to the 1580, perhaps because the 1580 was such decent quality and the price was so low, there simply was not enough profit margin to justify continued production. Or, as is the case with a lot of technology, it was a good product that they simply stopped making just because it was old. Which is not a good reason to stop making a product. If a product is good and it works, keep making it. And keep using it. Don't just get a new one because it's old. Okay, so that's going to wrap up this video of the Uniden D1680-2C Digitan Duo Telephones.